for stopping by and hanging out with me this afternoon. It won't be a long one, but it's a bit of one. I have been um, busy, busy, busy doing binding. I have been, um, you know, I had a lot of um, quilts that were quilted but not bound yet. So I now have a, a stack I think there's four now that are um, have the binding attached to them, and now I just have to um, whip them down. <clears throat> I'm interested, though, in learning how to tack binding down by a friend of mine who has um, discovered or learned a way. Normally, when I tack binding down, I do, uh, you know, the same color thread, close to the same color thread as the binding, and I kind of whip it where the thread is not visible. But she has done tacked binding down where she uses a completely different color thread from the binding and does a whip stitch so it shows almost like a blanket stitch and it looks really awesome so I'm thinking that that might be in my future but that's what I've been doing the last few days is just binding 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 um, I am motivated to get things going and clean, clear out some uh, stalemated projects. I have still have a pile of tops to quilt um, and then the binding uh, to tack down and then I have just a whole bunch of UFOs and I love them all. They're like they're like my little quilt children if you know what I mean. When I discover one like I've stumbled upon one I am like very very excited. Uh, like, oh, I've totally forgot about this one. Like, I have quite a few embroidery projects that kind of have been languishing out there that I just love. And um, and then I have a lot of um, wool stitching. Yeah. So, life is good. Life is good in the beehive. And it has been so helpful to distract me from the outside world. I feel quite accomplished. Um, yeah, I don't know. I got I, I got all worked up this last week about uh, spending time up here. And I think it's the realization when we had to cancel our um, the first part of our camping trip. Uh, both G and I got were quite sad about it. And I think that as we've talked about it, that we really do, for us, I mean, uh, some of you may think totally differently, but for us, we are thinking that this is going to be going on for a while. And so we need to figure out for ourselves, because we are the quilt roadies, our, we had created this life of being on the road and seeing things we hadn't seen before and camping and going to quilt shops I've never been to and revisiting my favorite ones. <clears throat> so the idea that we can't really plan anything because it's almost like more painful to plan it and then cancel it. I don't know. Everybody's different. Everybody is different. But it is an entirely different life than we had a year ago. And so we talked about it yesterday that we have to really look at what if this goes on for several more months how do we want to create our pattern of living where we are joyful? Yeah. And it's not something you say, oh, I'm just not going to, I'm not going to be depressed about it. I'm not going to be angry about it. I'm, I'm not going to cry over another cancellation. No, you have to allow yourself to feel those emotions. But at the same time, 
we want to have dreams and hopes and so we talked a lot about um, what do we want the next year to look like? What if if this goes on? How are we going to um, create an environment here that gives us the same joy as being on the road? <laughs> and so we've been working on that. And one of the things that I really um, looked at is that. I want to spend more time in the beehive and actually be creating, um, not only creating, but passing on what I create to people I know in my family that might um, love whatever I've created. And so that is my first tentative step. And this last week I have been spending quite a bit of time in the beehive. I've been spending my daytime, if I'm not out, um, I'm spending my daytime hours up here and then doing cross stitch in the evening when I'm sitting down there um, and getting more of a balance um, to it. And yeah, this is starting to feel feel good. It's starting to feel good. And kind of rearranging, rearranging things in the beehive and actually looking in some of these nooks and crannies and and um, I am I'm I'm feeling my mojo is what I'm feeling. And so I spent, you know, several days binding, uh, attaching binding to quilts. I think um, while the weather is still good, I'm not going to be um, just sitting and binding quilts. I'll do the, I'll save that for the winter months unless um, it's a quilt that I'm giving away uh, as a gift. And I have some baby quilts still to make. Yeah. Um, but today I have decided uh, to. I had a pile sitting there of um, project bags. Uh, that I want to make, project bags that I want to make. So I thought I would be, um, as we sit and chat, I would make project bags. So I will probably, as I'm sewing, be repositioning the camera to my sewing machine. It's not a tutorial because I use a free pattern on the Moda Bake Shop and I have a link to the Moda Bake Shop on the left side. I believe it's on the left side, yeah, of my woollymammoth.blogspot.com. And there's a lot of links. And there's some blogs on the right side uh, of people. I love blogging because I, it's a different part of my brain that's working when I type and write. Even when it's just a, a short snippet of what the day uh, what the previous day had been like. And I'm currently uh, trying to blog uh, twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Sometimes I forget. <laughs> but I usually remember by the next day. And it's a little different peek into my life than on Quilt Roadies uh, because it's more consistent in that it's weekly. And um, so if you want to sign up, uh, subscribe, there's no cost or anything to subscribe, be a subscriber uh, to that. It's more of a, a weekly look on something other than what's on my quilt roadies or stitch roadies um, because I don't want to be boring and redundant. And it's also a way for me, I have some favorite bloggers that I love to read what they're up to. And there's all kinds of different genres that are on there. And they are on the right-hand side of the blog. And so I can sometimes take a peek and, and read what they're up to. But the Moda Bake Shop is on the left side. And there's a uh, on their site, they have a pattern for a uh, free vinyl fronted project bag. Now, 
there are many patterns and many ways to do this, and some are easier and better. I am stuck on this one because it's the one I finally figured out how to do zippers, and they come out. <laughs> they, they turn out. So that's why I keep going back to the Moda Bake Shop. And I finished one already today, and it's adorable. Um, I haven't tacked down the binding around it, and yes, there is a way, there are patterns out there where you bring the back to the front, and you fold it under, and you can machine down the, the binding, um, but I just do it this way. I bind my project bag just like I would be binding a quilt, and so I made this one, and <laughs> look at those fish. So I still, all I have left to do is to bring that binding over to the back and then tack, you know, whip stitch it down. But look at those fish. And then this is the front. I'm so proud of myself because I had zipper phobia. And this has been the first uh, pattern where I have actually been able to sew a zipper. In fact, it took me a while to figure out what what's the zipper foot and how do you use it. <laughs> but yeah, I'm pretty darn uh, pretty darn pleased with myself. So I know last time I uh, in the last video I uh, showed you the pile of um, fabrics that I wanted to make into project bags. So this is what I made so far. And so now, while we're just stitching and talking, I'm working on the second one. And um, it's basically pretty darn easy. This one is going to be owls. Isn't that cute? This was fabric that I bought at the quilt market in Tucson um, this past winter. And I like to, these are just 15 inch squares, the, the front and the back although I have this fabric turned the wrong way, so i got to turn it around. And I have a two 15-inch squares of complementary fabric, and then I have a 14-inch square of batting. Cause I, and I like to quilt, quilt. I don't do a lot of fancy quilting, but I like to quilt it. And I just use a walking, uh, and I don't, you know, I'm not pinning it. Uh, it's not like a, like a quilt. It's not a big thing. It's a small sandwich that I'm doing. <clears throat> and um, I think that uh, it's fun because what I do when I cut the, uh, you know, you need two. Well, you can change the size of these, and I have made bigger ones because uh, I wanted a bigger project bag, and all I did was increase the size from what the Moda Bake Shop says. But this is this size here is like a standard size, um, standard size uh, project bag. But what I do automatically, just to just to save time and to not waste fabric, is that you know it, you got basically two fat quarters of complementary fabric, and then you have a third piece that you're going to be cutting that the zipper gets sewn on. But at the same time when I'm cutting my stuff out, with the leftover fabric, I just cut the largest square out of the scraps. So this is uh, this is all the fabric from the project bag I made this morning and the one I'm going to be working on. I just cut six inch squares and three inch squares. Uh, because that's the largest size I could cut out of the scraps. And then I save those in a box to use on a scrap quilt that might need those size squares. And so then it's already ready to go when I'm not having to cut up a bunch of fabric. You know, I'm kind of like easy peasy as you go. So for this project, for this size project bag, I cut out two 15 inch squares and a 14 inch square of batting. I've got my 14, uh, 15 inch zipper and I have two uh, 14 inch by six inch and 
14 inch by 4 inch piece of um, complimentary trim. And on top of that, I cut out a vinyl. Of, this is a 9 by 14 inch piece of vinyl. But all of those, all of those um, measurements are on the Moto Bake Shop. When I do project bags, I rarely just cut out one at a time in terms of the um, vinyl and the batting. <laughs> Boy, my brain is not firing. Um, so since I have to be cutting batting, and I know I may be going to make three or four, four or five project bags, I'll cut out that many squares so it's all ready to go. And the vinyl, I'll cut out the vinyl. And I use a medium, kind of a medium grade vinyl, and I got it at um, Joann's. It, you know, and I buy it, I'll show it to you, I, I buy it in this um, yardage. So, and she was lucky, nice enough that she wrapped that vinyl around the uh, a tube for me. So, I have enough vinyl for several project pegs. But, um, it's kind of fun. It's just kind of fun. And they're fun. And I'm thinking that, um, you know, I have a ton of project bags in my cross-stitch world. But I'm beginning to think I might like a couple of these vinyl-fronted project bags for some of my quilt stitching. I am really, uh, I mean, I can hardly concentrate the last couple days because I can't stop thinking about hexes. I don't know what happened there. I think when I started hanging out here, and I have a little desk here, a little antique children's desk that is my hexy station. And um, I think when I had this leftover fabric from <clears throat> when I attached a binding, you know, you cut off the excess edge when you have put the binding on a quilt, and this kind of spider webby thing, I just, I just want to up a bunch of hexes and so I am thinking that uh, I can uh, make myself a little project bag and put my hexes in there and then work on those as an alternative to um, everything else that I'm stitching everything else that I'm stitching so I'm going to just be sewing while I, and in between I'll be talking, and, and so I'm going to change the camera angle, and you can um, hang out with me, maybe get your stitching out. So let's see here. Yeah, there we go. to get that to the center because I had it set on a quarter inch seam. And I'm not even marking any of my quilting marks. I'm just kind of going for it.
my son and daughter-in-law took their um, son to the zoo. They have opened the zoo up and they allow so many people in at a time. And there, you have to wear a mask, and there's all kinds of restrictions. But it was, it's, it's so stressful because there were signs everywhere that were saying like the kids can't touch this surface. I mean, he's a three-year-old, you know, and it was like, <laughs> how do you tell a three-year-old not to touch this or touch that? Oh my gosh. My favorite thing about my, I have, what is this? Uh, it's a Janome Memory Craft 8200. My two favorite things are the, the thread cutter and the thread threader. <laughs> the thread cutter and the thread threader. So now my, the back and inside of my project bag is quilted. So the next thing I'm going to do is you cut these two strips out. Uh, one is um, four inches by uh, 14 inches and Four, uh, six inches by 14 inches and then you um, iron you iron them each in half so you know I ironed it in half and then on the smaller one you opened what you ironed in half and you again bring the raw edge to the center of the ironing mark so that it's like double do you see that it's like double folded into the center. And this is the piece that the vinyl is going to be tucked into. So I got my vinyl already. And I'm going to tuck my vinyl into the slot. And the instructions are really easy. Easy, easy to follow. But one of the things that I learned when I tried to make project bags um, in Arizona on my little Janome gym was that um, you really need uh, the walking foot because the, the vinyl is, depending on how thick your vinyl is, the vinyl can be kind of thick and, you know, it's hard to to push it through. It's like I was having to force it through. So I'm just going to make sure that that vinyl is tucked all the way into that folded fabric. And, and then I'm going to sew it. So there's the front of my project bag, vinyl. Now the next step for me is to put the zipper on. 
This is the scary part. It's the zipper. And so I have to change my foot. box down here. It's an old sewing machine drawer. We're supposed to be in the 90s all week this next week. I mean, that's amazing. That means a lot of people on the water. <clears throat> take my quarter inch foot off and get my zipper foot. And then they, you got to make sure this is uh, <laughs> this is the really uh, you have to make sure that the zipper is lined up and you're not going to cut off the zipper you know you you're not going to cut off the zipper before you have it all sewn uh, you know the front and back kind of sewn together so the your zipper doesn't come apart expert zipper um, zipper people are going to go, oh my god, it's so scary watching her. Watching her put a zipper on. Okay, I have to say, breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. I'm moving my... Moving my needle over. Okay. Any of you have zipper fear? I mean, I, I tell you, it's kind of scary. But once you get it, once you get it, it's like ah. Oh. second line just because I want that zipper really to be down there. Yeah. Whew. Almost wish I had a, a cocktail. 
Okay, so now this is the piece with the vinyl. And going to line this piece up with that zipper. Um, I think I'm going to want to, oh, oh my thread, I think just thread, no, it's still threaded. Okay. have to make sure that you move that needle over so you don't get um, you don't break your needle these are not simple. That's why I buy so many of them. <laughs> you know, that's why I like to, I like to, you know, uh, uh, toolbox, um, and dot dot goose, and oh, yeah. This is a lot of work. Sometimes that the zipper pull itself gets in the way, so you want to move that out of the way. Yes. Okay. Pretty darn nice. So now the choice comes and I'm not going to bore you with this part but I'll raise the camera up and show you what's going to go on next because I don't have the um, I don't have the binding yet I haven't decided about the binding but what I do know is see I have to decide do I want it to look like that and I get to choose at this point or do I want it to look like that and then have that on the back I'm kinda of thinking I really want the owls peeking even though there'll be fabric there'll be fabric peeking through but here's the trick I'm not gonna uh, uh, I'm not gonna make you s sit through my making binding because you all know how to make quilt binding uh, but my this piece is smaller than the piece that I'm the quilted piece that'll be the inside and back of the bag and um, so when I make the binding I am going to sew it around these pieces just like I would a quilt. Just like this would be a layered quilt. I'm going to sew it around there and um, I am not going to 
you put the you, you pull the zipper pull towards the center so you don't want to cut that off see this is the hard part you don't want to cut that off so when you've cut the two pieces together you're going to pin them you're going to keep the zipper pull in the center of the zipper because when you cut this side off there's nothing holding that zipper in together you know you have to get that binding sewed on and you pin it you pin these layers just like you would a quilt and then um, when you pin the, through the vinyl, you want to do it on the edge, not like the center, because the hole will show up. So you just do it on the edge. And then that's it. You've got a, you've got a, a project bag all made. Is that not adorable? That's adorable, if I do say so myself. So I know I have uh, one more project bag to make. I, I, um, I really want to make one out of this fabric that I got at the stitching post. It is, um, it's just beautiful fabric, but I have to find some complementary fabric. And I know that I'm going to use, you know how I bought that, where is it? Oh, um, I bought, uh, my friend, um, my, my virtual friend, Graham, who is the Yorkshire boy quilter, he showed this, um, this, I know, I, I might have showed this already, but this quilt pattern, he was quilting it. I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with it. And uh, it's a free download. I got the download for this uh, particular pattern off of Jordan Fabrics in there in Grants Pass, Oregon. But they had, oh, they had so many fun um, patterns to download for free. And so I downloaded this pattern. I knew immediately that I was going to use, I had a bundle of cherry wood dyed fabric. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? There is nothing like cherry wood fabric. Uh, and so I had a bundle of that, and then yesterday uh, I had to go in to bend, and I stopped by a quilt shop. I wish I'd had my camera. Next time, next time I go, I'll um, bring my video camera, because it is a quilt shop in Bend, and they had the shop is really beautiful. It's a beautiful shop. And so I went all around there looking for the background piece to this fabric. You know, I wanted to find something special, and I found this piece with all the colors sprinkled in it. Isn't that pretty? That is so pretty. But I thought I had this fabric I bought at the Stitch and Post, which is... Um, it's a panel fabric, so it has all these words written on it. And this panel, I got this at the Stitch and Post, and it's um, it's called Letters um, AGF Studio. I think that's Art Gallery Fabrics. Yeah, Art Gallery Fabrics. So I'm going to make a project bag out of this, but... I want to add a bit of this to this quilt because with this with this yardage um, there's this whole banner of hearts. You see that? I thought that would be fun if I could figure out how to cut that out and insert it into one of those. And then, the reason I wanted to make a project bag out of it is because there's this part to it. All you need is love. So that could be the back of a project bag. Wouldn't that be gorgeous? I've got my mojo. I've got my mojo going. So um, I need to get these project bags um, under control a bit here the next day or two because I want to start that quilt. 
and I still have to stitch my buttermilk basin. It's a good life. It's a good culty life. Well, thank you for hanging with me uh, and stopping by. I hope that I have helped you in uh, get your excitement for your quilting going. Uh, I know some of you, I, I follow some of you on Instagram, and you are pedal to the metal. Um, so I'm passing on that joy. Uh, I hope that you get some stitching done, um, get some gardening if it's good weather for you. Um, stay safe. Please stay safe. And um, be careful out there. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. And be sure to like and subscribe on Quilt Roadies. Thank you.